Hi lovely booktube. Today I'm doing my very first tag, the what's your hobby tag. Um, Denise and I were talking the other day firstly about books and then I was admiring some of her beautiful artwork and we got to talking about hobbies and things that we like to do outside of reading. So we decided to come up with this what's your hobby tag. Um, and yes, definitely if you do have a hobby outside of reading, please do the tag, share with us and let us know. I will also link uh, Denise's video below in the comment box. So without further ado, here are the questions. A hobby a day keeps the doldrums away. Phyllis McGinley, what's your favourite hobby? I've mentioned the reading. Outside of that, probably at the moment it is crafting, so patchwork quilting, um, knitting, although I still have issues with casting on and off. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, I also like to garden and I like to bake. Question number two. I can elect something I love and absorb myself in it. And I sneeze. What made you want to start your hobby? Uh, basically, I like to think I come from a very creative family. My mother, who has since passed away, absolutely loved to do everything basically. She used to knit, she'd sew, she used to make macrame, um, and yeah, it's sort of my papa, who's also no longer with us, was a photographer, my cousin's a photographer, both um, my aunt and my cousin both paint and my aunt also makes uh, clothing for a living. So I think it was always just there and you know every Christmas we'd always get uh, pencils and colouring books and things like that for Christmas. Um, so we were always encouraged to create I guess and, and just try to do things this, I just thought I'd show you really quickly. This is actually one of the jumpers that my mother knit and it's a bit sad because it's now full of moth holes and it has stains and things on it and I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it. Um, if I can't I will keep the buttons off this and pop it onto a scarf that I knitted last year. Um, but yes that was sort of how I got into it and then I think also my working at a library I get to see all of the beautiful art and craft books that come through our doors. Um, so yes, I just, I see something and I'm like, Ooh, I wish I could make that. And so I do try. Sometimes it works, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Um, number three, cure for an obsession. Get another one by Mason Cooley. What's the best worst thing about your hobby? For me, I am very, very, I guess, ADD about things. I will start something, case in point, the scarf that I knitted last year, which I was going to make sort of into one of those cow scarves. So I basically just need to sew it together and put the buttons on it and then I can wear it. But I still haven't done that. <laughs> because and I'm going to take that off because it's like hot today <laughs> I'll sort of see the next thing and I won't have finished the last project that I'm working on so sometimes I forget about the project that I'm almost finished which does I think it's a drawback um, also the fact that I have piles and piles of fabric because you know I'll I'll see something in a store and I'll go that's absolutely beautiful fabric <laughs> so I have boxes full of fabric and yes nowhere to put them and then yes I don't actually I haven't done anything with it so that is actually my one of my 2015 resolutions is to make sure that I do something with everything that I have bought Number four, any tips for interested parties? I think, and Denise was on the money with this one, just do something every day, whether it's keeping a journal. 
um, or you know having a go I basically what happened is I saw a patchwork book at work I've looked at it and I've gone hey that looks pretty cool I'm gonna give that a go so luckily for me there was a um, a patchworking class and I just turned up and started to patchwork that night so I think you really just need to put yourself out there and just give it a go um, and I did actually mean to share a couple of books with you that um, I think oh, and it's a tome my goodness if I can pick it up um, this is actually a new book that's come into our library now um, but I think in in looking at how to I think these especially with quilting is a great way it sort of explains how like how to put together a quilt um, you know where you different patterns and things like that when you're cutting up your little these are like the little blocks that you make when you put the quilts together how to put them together um, you know just little steps to make sure you iron one thing I learnt was you iron it all in the same way and then you when you sew it make sure that all of the um, the joins are facing the same way because then it doesn't bulk your quilt up all the little things that um, you don't think about when you're wanting to do your craft so I think it's really great if obviously there's no um, quilting class because basically that was what I was taught in the class I didn't have to look at a book but I think if you can't get to a class definitely check books like this out I know YouTube has a lot of fantastic videos as well for instructions um, I guess definitely one tip that I would think when doing with quilting is starting with something like this this is called a jelly roll um, and basically this particular one is pre-cut strips and that way you don't have to worry about especially for me starting out worrying about cutting everything to the right size um, the two, two quilts that I'm going to show you in a second were actually made with um, fat quarters which are pre-cut squares and they're perfectly square so it just for me it took the stress out of um, trying to make sure that I'd cut things straight <laughs> sewing them in a straight line was another thing <laughs> But definitely little things like that I think especially if you're starting out can be really really helpful so we're on to the show and tell portion of the evening and yes I have already shown you the magic scarf this is something that I knit when um, my mum was still alive and it's super plain but it was just lots of you know I was starting out it was lots of fun this is basically pearl and plain stitching and it was just something that was really really easy to do it was all I all I did basically was a giant rectangle and you fold it over so there's no real like it's not hard like my mum had all the rib stitching and the little things where you have to use two needles to to twist in her in her jumper I don't think that um, I am in any way capable of that. So here's the first quilt that I made and much to my annoyance I still haven't actually 100% finished it. All I've got to do is hand stitch this one side which is part of the reason why <laughs> it's not finished yet. But I made this for my latest niece and it's a bit hard to see but it's a cot blanket um, and also I don't know if you'll be able to see <laughs> I um, didn't sew all of these squares that straight which was which was a bit of a running joke in the um, in the class but yeah these are all little individual fat quarters of a baby size and this is the most ba basic pattern ba you put it together with um, one square and two little strips of fabric of your contrasting fabric whichever you'd like to use and the other quilt that I'm working on which I used um, 
the large fat quarters with. Sorry guys, I should have pulled this out beforehand. Okay. So this is just a quilt for my bed. Du, 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 du. So yes, again, it's using the same pattern as I did before, but these are with biggie, bigger squares, but it's the same principle, the, um, the coloured square in the middle and then the two strips either side and you just alternate those. And then just to make the quilt fit my bed, the two extra strips around the side. And then basically all I have to do for this one is pop it on the big machine um, with wadding and a backing and you end up, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you can do all sorts of patterns. This is, um, and it is really a bit hard to see, you might be able to sort of see the stitching, but it's just a cloud pattern. Um, and that's quite popular to pop those on. It's this massive, huge machine. But yes, that is my show and tell. Um, and that is the tag. Thank you very much for watching. Um, as I said, please, if you feel free, please feel free to do this tag is what I'm trying to say. Use your words. But definitely, I will tag a few people in the comment box, but if you'd like to do it, consider yourself tagged. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.